Having many hedgehogs in your garden is a privilege, but it does give you a very wonderful problem to have, identifying individual hedgehogs from one another. Or even simpler, trying to identify which of your visitors are male and which are female. Welcome to Hedgehogs Hollow, the channel for people passionate about hedgehogs who want to attract them to their gardens and once they support those visiting hedgehogs within their backyards and gardens. As hedgehogs wake up from their hibernation, hopefully more and more will be visiting your garden. But that does lead us to trying to work out which individuals are which and identify those individuals from each other. Before we get into identifying the hedgehogs, let's just start with a few basics. Firstly, why is it important to identify individual hedgehogs? Isn't one hedgehog just one more hedgehog? Well, no. Hedgehog numbers here in the UK in particular have declined dramatically over the last years and decades to the point where in July 2020, they were placed on the UK red list as a species that is vulnerable to, to extinction. And indeed throughout Europe, despite enjoying higher levels of more strict and stringent regulation, hedgehog numbers throughout the continent have continued to decline. And that means that each individual hedgehog is important and knowing whether you have one or two or three or even more is important for organizations such as the British Hedgehog Preservation Society and others who are wanting to know the numbers so that we can record the populations where they are and what their numbers are doing. Are they growing? Are they declining? Are they stabilizing? And being able to understand how many hedgehogs you have also helps you to support them better within your local environment and in your garden. But, and this is an important but, it's important to remember that hedgehogs continue to be wild animals and you should not allow your natural enthusiasm to directly impact them in any way. It is terribly important and I would also always advise to observe without interfering and without direct contact with the hedgehogs. There are many, many ways of being able to identify hedgehogs from one another and even being able to identify their sex is relatively easy if you've got the right equipment. And here again, I would suggest making sure you have a wildlife camera that allows that observation without interference. You can watch them at close quarters where the camera is without impacting them directly at all. And so all the methods of identification that I'll look at in this video are going to rely on having a wildlife camera. And it's not that I'm wanting to sell you a wildlife camera, but I really do feel that giving the hedgehog the natural space and without interfering with their behavior is terribly, terribly important. So always remember, observe without interfering and with as little contact as possible. And that does mean please never ever paint or mark hedgehogs. There's some terrible stories of people using nail varnish, people using paint just to distinguish one hedgehog from another. And all that that does is it puts the hedgehog in danger. It impacts its ability to naturally camouflage. Of course, you're trying to identify the hedgehog, so you're marking it with a bright color so that you yourself can see where they are and who they are. But you're impacting that animal's ability to naturally camouflage itself, either for protection or when it's trying to hunt itself. So please, never ever directly mark a hedgehog for whatever purpose, rather observe without interfering. But enough of the rules and reading the riot act. Let's start with identifying hedgehogs. And firstly, how can we tell a male from a female hedgehog? Well, it is relatively simple. The male body and the female body are quite different when it comes to genitalia. The male have a penile sheath about halfway down their tummy that protrudes quite extensively and looks like a large belly button. Whereas the female genitalia are far closer to the anus. And whilst you may not directly be able to identify the female by the location of their genitalia, it's more likely that you'll notice the lack of the large protruding belly button that is very obvious within males. 
When it comes to identifying individuals, there are actually quite a few different ways that I've noticed of being able to identify one from another. The first is coloration of their spines. Now, it may not look obvious to the natural eye, but when they are under the infrared light of the wildlife camera, their markings are very, very distinctive and usually come up as white splodges or as dark patches within the spines. Now, these are not actually patches at all, but it is just the way that the spines are orientated toward the camera and create these light and dark patches. But these light and dark patches are such that individuals can be identified from one another. Hedgehogs also have distinctly different facial features and markings. And there's two things about the face that you can notice. Either the actual markings on the face with darker areas, perhaps below the eyes. I've had a hedgehog with a dark patch on its forehead that was very distinctive, even from a fair distance away. Or secondly, you can notice a distinctly different shapes head hedgehog individuals can be noted from the shape of their head. And you can see an example here of both Walter and Ollie at the water bowl. And you can see that there's a distinctly differently shaped head. And that distinction makes it very easy to, without any other coloration type identification, to be able to see them very easily from one another. Finally, we've discussed previously that all hedgehogs have a particular personality. And for some hedgehogs, this personality leads to particular behavior. And you can tell a hedgehog simply by the way it is behaving, from its antics, its swagger, and its particular behavior. You can tell one hedgehog from another, or you can at least tell one individual who regularly visits and has that particular swagger. Being able to identify hedgehogs is really, really important. And when the hedgehogs first started visiting my garden, I wasn't even aware of the fact that I had three or four individuals visiting. I actually just thought it was the same one coming in front of the camera because I hadn't yet learned how to tell one hedgehog from another. At the very beginning, one hedgehog looked exactly the same as all the rest. But as I learned, I identified that I actually had quite a population in my garden and that helped me to better understand them. So being able to identify your individual visitors is really important, even just in your own garden, but as a whole across the entire country, it's important that we understand the numbers of our hedgehog population. I hope you too have more than just the one individual visiting your garden. I hope you have many and that with the help of this video, you're able to identify the differences. If you have enjoyed this video, do please give it a like. And before you go off identifying your hedgehogs, do subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet done so. And that will make sure you get a notification of every video that comes along every Thursday on the channel. So until next Thursday, from myself, Mike, take care. Bye-bye.